Hey, welcome back. I am Mary Catherine Maroney and I am the owner of Cozy Crooked Cottage. So we are in the middle of our music soap series where we are exploring the music compositional periods through soap. So thus far we have done um, medieval and we have done renaissance. Today we are going to jump into the Baroque period, which is from 1600 to 1750 AD. So this is kind of coming into the middle. We've just ended the Renaissance. And what's really neat about the Baroque period is that now we are looking at music in keys. So we are starting to see music that is complex, that is having intricate harmonies. And what this does is the Baroque period really sets up music and the structure of music for the next about three centuries. So it's incredible where, where we've come from in the medieval time and where all of a sudden music is changing just from 1100, 1150. Um, so in the Baroque period, we're starting to explore the idea of the modern orchestra, you know, the opera, the concerto, sonatas, cantatas, choral music, which was a big thing, and the Renaissance period is starting to get moved away from, and we're moving into instrumental music, um, and more orchestral arrangements. And so it's starting to become more um, classical. We're not fully into the classical time period yet, but we're starting to head into that, into that aspect and how music is being used in society. So if you remember, in the medieval period, it was very, very sacred. As we came into the Renaissance, it started being sacred and secular. Now music is starting to be used as a function in society and being played at many different parties and at functions and it's a social aspect. And so that's a really neat thing. And some of the elements of Baroque music are that we have very, very much moved away from modes when it comes to tonalities and we are moving into keys that we have moved into scales, the development of scales and the development of keys into intricate harmony and complexity within the music, as well as uh, the development of complex instruments. You have your wind instruments have really developed into, now you have the oboe and the bassoon. You have um, string instruments, including the cello and the bass, and, and now we have early versions of the piano that we've moved from the harpsichord into the forte piano. And just the string instruments have gone from a light sound to a more robust sound. sound. They're a lot stronger. All of the instrumentation is becoming more advanced. It's becoming able to, to handle these intricate delicate harmonies as well as the complexity and the demands of the music. Um, it's also introducing a, a lot more percussion. You know, you're having the timpani, you've got snare drums, tambourines, castanets, all kinds of music just from all over the place. And you also, this is where a lot of your really well-known composers are. You know, you have Bach, you have Handel, you have Purcell, you have Scarlatti, you have Lully, Rameau, uh, Domenico Scarlatti, Vivaldi, Telemann, and all of these composers, you know, are, become very, very well-known names, and then their musical contributions help transform into the next compositional period to come. So when I was looking at how to design the soap, we're coming out of the Renaissance, which is, is adding harmony and is really starting to create these, these voices that work together, but is still in development. And so I took that and I thought about one of my favorite works is the Bach fugues and how he takes something that's similar to the choral music of Palestrina or um, Dispre. And it's these, these vocal lines that sing through but then they are echoed in different um, octaves and in different registers or in fundamentals. And then they add a complexity that really centers them in a modality, in a tone. And so that's what I was thinking when I created this. So this is our Baroque. And what I did is I took this main color right here and I created it as the main uh, tone, as the main color theme. And I took that and then I changed it. So down here, I added in some um, 
activated charcoal to make it darker, to make it so I added some blues and some charcoal into here. And then we kept this, but then up in this one, I added just a little bit of the blue again. And then in this one, a little bit of the blue as well as some titanium dioxide, which is white. And so all of them share the same base. They share the same base melody per se. They share the same compositional idea or foundation, but then they all have their own intricacies. And if you can see, uh, it's called a slant technique and the, the lines are not straight. So this is where we start getting, um, so the fugue form is taking this idea of the melody repeated in different voices, kind of similar to the motets that we've looked at, but then you also have the toccatas, which is very, very intricate and very virtuosic. Um, and so there's that Maya gold that we've seen in our previous soaps. The Maya gold is in these layers and they've been scalloped. They've had these designs and these shapes that help to work through and complete and create complexity and to create this intricacy and this delicacy throughout. So as you can see, the shades are very subtle, but they are very different that we have this dark blue and then we have this this greenish blue but then this one goes a little lighter blue and then of course this top one with that titanium dioxide really pops but then it's this idea again that we're moving towards classical and so across the top is all of a sudden this really swoopy wavy line that is um the spectacle you know, that it's that you want to see it at a dinner party or you want to something very, very elegant is the word I keep coming back to, you know, but the, um, the trompe de l'aile, that it's this elegance and this gold that is just shimmering through as the waves and the swirls happen. And you're going to see that continue into the next period. Um, and so they're all connecting that the very same gold and blue that we saw in the medieval time period worked its way through the Renaissance and now is appearing still in the Baroque and then it's going to hop into the following period as they all just continue to work and adjust to each other. The other thing that drew me to this, the scent for this, is called Crisp Juniper and it has, the bottom notes are lavender and rosemary, which you, if you're not a lavender person, you don't smell it, <laughs> but it is lavender and rosemary so it's very clean, it's very bright and fresh and then the middle notes are lemon and lime again citrusy very very fresh very very clean um just a refreshment that we've been moving out of this dark time and then the top note is actually juniper um and so we've gone from these very warm rich earthy bodied tones kind of rough and raw and i wanted something that was on its way to elegant and refined but still new, that it was new and that it was crisp and clean and something that hadn't been yet. And so the crisp juniper really took these, these earthy scents, this, uh, the lavender and the rosemary and the herbs, and then added in that citrus and makes it just a very clean, sparkling fragrance as it starts to finish itself and head into the more refined elegance of the periods to come. And so this is the Baroque period that it's, it's this major transition period out of modes and out of single voices and tonalities into these complex chords and into scales and into just very, very um, intricate compositions as well as a huge surge in instrumentation and a huge surge in how things are being composed um, you know, a huge surge in opera in, in, in all of these art forms that will impact everything that we know even up through today. So it was a really neat time period and this actually was the last soap that I made in the whole series because it encompassed so many ideas that I didn't really know where to start. And so um, I had to really sit for a long time with the other ideas and with the other scents and how they all worked together to see how the Baroque fit in the middle. So as always, thank you so much for joining us um, for the Cozy Crooked Cottage Music Soap Series. And stay tuned, we have two more to go. Uh, you have the classical and the romantic period coming up. <laughs>